Hey guys, Metsides here, and today I am back in r slash black hole revenge for day number two. Last episode was like not even ten minutes long for some reason. Uh, just the stories I found were so short that I read them too fast. Hopefully I'll get past ten minutes today with these two stories. And these two stories sort of have a question at the start, and then the... Uh, Enjoy whatever in their titles. So we'll start off with this one. You want to mug me? Enjoy the wheelchair and permanent brain damage. This was dug up by me on Remove It. Remove It? What? As the original was deleted, so this isn't my story, so yeah, don't blame me if this is effed up. So anyways, here's the story. Okay, to preface this entire forked up story, this all pl took place 30 years ago. My memory is not that great, and I might get some things wrong. Also, I go into some graphic details. You have me warned. TLDR at the end. Okay, so we got another story that is from an... Like, this is not a karma. I don't think this is a person fishing for karma. They just found this story and they wanted this story to be out there again. In 1989, I was a 19-year-old kid living in New York City. I was working as a delivery guy at a dingy hole-in-the-wall pizza place in Hell's Kitchen that's long since gone out of business and living paycheck to paycheck. I had moved to New York looking for work after my uncle's construction company went under and had found a tiny short hole of an apartment which was the only thing I could afford on the salary, salary I got from the pizza place. The only reason I took the job was I needed money and it was extremely close to my apartment and a short walk down the back alley. Hint hint, the alley is important. I want you to I want you all to keep in mind while reading this, the New York of 30 years ago was not the touristy New York of today. Murder, murders were a lot more common. You would see hookers work in the corner pretty often. Times Square was a cesspool of nudie bars and prom theaters. Gangs would rob people on the subway. And it was almost every day where I lived that you would see a druggie passed out in an alley or alongside of the road. The whole ordeal started just after, just after closing one night in July. The guy who owned the joint, Paulio, said uh, that I could take some leftover pizza home with me that had been sitting under the heat lamp all day. But hey, at least it was free. I had been working at the pizza place for about a year by this point, and I was on really good terms with Paulio and his brother Joseph, who ran the joint. Who both ran the joint. Polio was easily pushing 300 pounds and had a habit of smoking a giant cigar while cooking. Joseph was always in the back handling the money side of things and taking phone orders. The restaurant had an exit into the alley which I would take to get back to my place. There would, be, there would usually be a homeless vet named Alfonso that would sleep next to the hot air vent behind the place who, who would bump a smoke off me, and we would shoot the short for a few minutes after my shit. Shift. After talking with him, I started to walk home, and after I'd, I had gone quite a distance down the alley, I heard some bowls rustling behind a dumpster that was right ahead of me. My first thought was it was some rat, until this crazy-eyed dude swung out from behind it with a hunting knife in one hand and a male bat in the other. I remember this guy looked like he had stereotypical druggy, track marks all over his arms, d disgusting clothes on, wild dirty hair, and fidgeting like no tomorrow. He started yelling and screaming at me to give him my wallet. At that point my adrenaline was through the roof, as I had never been mugged before. I was carrying the pizza box with two hands, and when I shifted it to my left hand to reach into my back pocket for my wallet with my right, he started advancing on me. He started muttering to himself asking why I was doing that and sort of grunting while jabbing the air in front of him. At this point I know this guy is high off his ass uh, on something or a definite head case. He was really close to me by this point but bef 
and before I could take my world out, he loaded up his right arm and slashed me across my face with the hunting knife just below my left eye. At first, it didn't really hit me, and I was stunned for a second. It was at that point I started thinking, this is it. This is it. I'm going to die in a forking alley over the four bucks I have with my wallet. That's when I decided to start fighting. If I was going down, I was doing it swinging. I threw the pizza box in his face, which made him step back a bit. Using both hands, I grabbed the bat out of his left hand they were still holding. I flipped it around and for the outside of his left knee, which was the closest to me. It connected, I felt a snap when it buckled inwards. Ah, not the knee! Oh, it's like Harley Quinn! <laughs> and, and, like, the Harley Quinn movie that came out, like, a few years ago. <laughs> this brought him to one knee, but he started to get up, back up again, and he, like, he couldn't even feel it. I swung hard as I could and hit the left side of his temple, which made a crunch sound before he crumpled to the concrete. I remember being so incredibly scared, absolutely terrified. I don't remember much after this, years after this happened, when I went to see a psychiatrist for other reasons, reasons and this was brought up, and she told me it, was, it is likely because my mind was trying to shield me from the trauma of the whole experience. The next thing I remember is being soaked in blood and standing above this guy. I knew he was still alive and as he was gurgling blood out of his mouth and his chest was still rising and falling. There was blood coming out of his ears, nose and mouth. His right hand and arm had been holding the knife that had been holding the knife was a mangled mess with fingers jutting out every which way while the knife was a good four feet on the ground away on the ground. I dropped the bat and half stumbled, half walked back to the pizza place. Alfonso had heard the screaming and come to look. He told me that I had a glazed, uh, glazed over look to me, and I was almost entirely soaked in blood. He had led me back to the pizza joint where Paulio started calling the cops and an ambulance. And Paulio's brother, Joseph, rushed out of the back and grabbed a cheap bowl of cheap Prosesco we had from below the counter to douse my cart with, uh, while stemming the bleeding with table napkins. I spent the night in the hospital because apparently I was disoriented and disoriented and so confused I didn't know where I was because of blood loss. The next day I was doing better and there were two cops that came to take my statement. After I had told my side of the story, the older looking of the two cops said that after ten that after ten years on the job that guy took the worst beating he had seen anyone take and survive. The younger looking one started looking, started telling me what I had done to the guy, which included seven knee ligaments, uh, broken dislocated fingers, broken ribs, along with which had punctured a lung, a broken femur, multiple crushed and pulverized bones, a severed spinal cord with a couple broken vertebrae, a burst eardrum, Multiple teeth knocked out, a completely fractured jaw, a broken nose, a burst eye, a destroyed eye socket, and a completely destroyed cheekbone. That's 13 different things, man! He also told me that I had hit his skull so hard there was spinal fluid leaking out of his ears. Oh, Jeez. They said that they had spoken to Alfonso, Paulia, and Joseph, and they corroborated. They corroborated my story that the bat was the junkies, and I had most likely acted in self-defense. Although I had no answer to their question of why I didn't stop after he went down, besides, I don't know, and I don't remember. After a couple days, I was discharged, and after a little while, I was back to working at the pizza place. Although I now had a massive scar running down the side of my face, and Paulio jokingly called me Scarface all the time. Even now, I jokingly say to my wife before sex time, Say hello to my uh, little friend. <laughs> Which we still giggle maniac maniacally about together. I was also super jumpy right after the fact whenever I heard bells clanging together. Which unfortunately happened a lot because Joseph used to take the empty coke bowls to the recycling plant at the end of, the end of every week. What made me tell the story here is that recently I thought about how much of the junkie's blood might have gone in my mouth or in the slash across my face. At the time it happened, the whole 
HIV and AIDS panic was in full swing. And the guy being a junkie instantly made me realise how much short I could be in. If I was affected without knowing it, I could have passed it on to my wife or even my children by accident. After quite the panic between me and my wife because of overlooking this, we got the blood results back a bit just a bit ago and thankfully I'm completely clean. My doctor said that if I was infected back then, symptoms were likely manifested by now as well. So there, that was my incredibly long-winded story about one of the scariest events in my life, and the resurgent panic brought up <laughs> just a bit ago. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have about it, but I'm taking a flight for work in a bit, so you probably won't get a response from me for a few hours. TLDR I used to work at a dingy pizza place, was sl slashed across the face by a mugger, beat him half to death, got a cool scar, and 30 years after the fact, had a panic that I might have gotten HIV. I don't... I don't know, like... Yeah, you could have got HIV from blood to blood contact sort of stuff. Like, or if a bit of blood going in your mouth somehow. But, my god, dude. How much... Like, how much do you have to black out to do that to someone? I am amazed that there wasn't a smack to the balls in there somewhere. Like, you had this bat, and you could have gone for the nut shot, but you didn't. <laughs> like, if that had happened, I, I don't know what I would say. Like, <laughs> that, yeah. Let's just move on to the next story before I lose my mind over how I could have had an opportunity to be like, we got the trifecta on nut shots. You bullied me for eight years? Enjoy missing half your body. So to start off, I was a 14 straight A student and vengeful as vengeful can get when this happened. When I was six, new kid came to my school We'll call him Douchebag, and started picking on me, but I didn't really pay too much attention. Fast forward a couple of years, and I'm 11, the picking transformed into straight up bullying. Calling me names, beating me up for being a nerd. Being atheist, his family is Christian. Hey, that's... That ties a little bit into the last episode when I said I was, but I'm not sure about religion at all. <laughs> Stealing from me, he even hit me in the leg with a metal baseball bat. Hey, we got a feed building here. <laughs> Destroying my fibula and tibia, they're fine now. It got to the point where the popular kids gang up on me and beat me up every day. This continued until that very day. We were leaving on a trip to the zoo. I was wildly interested in animals, so I was excited. Douchebag must have seen this. Because he made my day a living hell. The time came. We got to the bears and douchebag came to me and whispered to me, I love you being I love you being eaten alive by those things. Before we continue, I'll say that there was a fifteen or so gap that separated the bridge we were standing on and the floor where the bears were. Back to the story. I backed off and waited for him to be distracted. I saw the opportunity, grabbed him by the legs and dropped him. Besides a bear. The bear must have been scared because he started mauling douchebag. Two other bears joined. We were evacuated immediately. I just recently heard that douchebag survived, but is missing both his eyes, his nose, his left arm, and both his legs. Nothing more satisfying than seeing the one who tormented you for almost a decade fall victim to your plans. <laughs> No one messed with me after that day. Douchebag, if you're reading this, I'm not sorry. Oh, that's right. You have no eyes. Well, he still has both ears, so if he just has a text-to-speech thing, he technically could listen to it. Although we got an edit here for April 23rd, 2019. I just got a text from my friend that douchebag actually committed Sudoku yesterday. Don't mess with me, or you'll learn the lesson the hard way, 
in a friendly way. Cat face. <laughs> I associate the column three with uh, cat face. Oh my goodness. Just. Just. Yeet! <laughs> he just got yeeted into the bears. Into the bears. How. Like, how much can you lose and survive? Because this dude lost an arm and both his legs. Also, how did he even commit Sudoku with only one arm? <laughs> that is, like, if you're able to do that, you, you gotta be pretty smart. <laughs> Unless he just rolled himself down a hill off cliff. Onto rocks. Didn't really think about that. Although still, he would have to wheel himself to that situation, make sure no one knows what he's doing, and actually know where he is. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so bad. I am so bad. Let's just get out of here before I make it even worse. Links will be in the description to my main channel, and also the second channel for you guys to go check out, along with links on the screen to the playlist in the last episode. Go check them out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, so you know when the next video comes out. A ding, a ding. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Mad Scientist, out.